saying? Because it's like you can't talk about Fort Worth without talking about Twisted Black. Right, right, right. Understood. Is, it, is that? I, I don't. I don't be on. You know, I don't do too much. Just trying to stay out the way for real. But um, I'm glad. Glad we did get, uh, make acquaintance, though. No, for sure, man. Uh, let's let. I appreciate get, it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to uh, rush things, but I know you know your time might be limited, so you want to go ahead and jump into it. Yeah, we good. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, first and foremost, um, before we start anything off, uh, let me say happy birthday. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, 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 second man, how you been? I'm, I'm, I'm great, man. I'm blessed. You know, I'm, I'm running the circumstances, you know, but it, it's good to finally be at the wire. So, okay, you know, that's a plus. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what does that mean? It means that um, I could be home as soon as 21, and as late as 22. So, you know, I'm hoping oh, that, uh, man. yeah, I'm hoping Joe Biden gets elected and the Kamala and push that, that, that next step act that they got in, in uh, Congress and that, that'll bring me on to the house. I, I thought, I thought, see, I've been told that Trump, whatever Trump put in place, have been getting a lot of brothers free. Listen, first of all, let, let, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. And, and I know your, your, your listeners know that this is not scripted, but a lot of people think that Trump passed the first step act he didn't i mean a lot of people think he you know authored it and you know has something to do with it he didn't but what trump did do is sign it because yeah. in in the beginning see the the democrats which i don't care for either side the democrats been trying to get through bills like that since 2016 and they stalled it out so what happened is trump knew he was going to need the minority vote so he just signed it, man. When that bill was first introduced, I would have been out of here. But they, you know, they stripped the bare bones. By the time they got to to, uh, to them, and you know, we just had to take what we can get. And hey, listen, I'm glad that it helped out a whole lot of guys. So it was a good thing. I won't take it from him, but it just it killed me when he takes the credit for it because he didn't do it. It was it was more of a political move him signing it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. You know, and it was just one of them things that they were like, hey, man, you, you got to go ahead and do You want the minority vote, you're going to have to do something. So just sign this. You know, he ain't had nothing to do with what's in it. He, he, and, you know, he said he probably don't know what's in it himself, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, what, what do you think about Obama, though? Um, he didn't really start helping as far as criminal justice reform till about 2016. Well, uh, 2014. I, well, no. He started as soon as he got in. As soon as he got in, I'm talking about like the first few months, he tried to push for crack to be, you know, to take out the, the bias and the sentencing. You know what I mean? Yeah, the one to ten tried, ratio. No, ain't no one to ten. It was uh, one to one hundred. Ooh. Yeah, man. So, you know, they was saying for every gram of crack, uh, I mean, for every, uh, yeah, for every gram of crack, it's like a hundred grams of powder. Mm -hmm. or, or, or vice versa. Yeah, I got it wrong, but yeah. So you know, you you may get you may you can have a kilo of, of powder and won't get nothing. But if you got a kilo of crack, you got a life sentence. But it's the same drug. The only difference is one gets you higher quicker, but you get to the same plateau. You know what I'm saying? So that wasn't fair because the only people that had crack was blacks. That part. That yeah. Part. So you know, he tried, but you know they. He tried to play nice in the beginning, and, and they, you know, they just got, you know, they shit candy, and like, man, get your black ass out of here. Right. And, uh, but, you know, Obama, he, he tried. That part. That part, that yeah. part. So, so, um, but before we get into all the specifics, can you just run us through, well, actually, let the people know who you are, for those who may not know and might be too young to remember. Damn. Don't make me sound like that. If they too young to remember, then uh, I'll tell you what, ask for me to look up to about Twisted Black, Fort Worth, Texas. Um, yeah. uh, I'm one, one of the pioneers out of that way. You know, I built a lot of bridges between Fort Worth and Dallas, you know, working with guys like uh, BSR, Big Chief, you know, my main man, Tom Tom, you know, Corey Cloud back then, you know what I mean? And uh, DJ Bebe, man, who's always been instrumental in, in my uh, my career, man. That's my buddy. So, you know, I, I rock with everybody about it here, you know. So, you know, Twisted Black. But the, the dip, well, a lot of y'all might not know me because I've been in the feds for the last 15 years. 
right. on 30, 30 year sentence to uh, uh, distrib- distribute uh, crack cocaine. <clears throat> so that happened back in 06, you know. Right, but, right, 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 right. Yeah, that's, that's the short version. Okay, uh, well, well, I want to get into it all, though, man. So so can we take it from the top? Like, first off, you're from initially from Michigan, right? I'm, I was born in Detroit. Yeah, I was born in Detroit, Michigan. And okay. I came to te- Texas when I was two years old. Okay. So you from the funk? Ain't no secret. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all day, every day. You know, of course... I'd be a, a hypocrite not to say where I'm born at. My family, I have family up in Detroit, and my father was from Detroit, so I got love for Detroit, but man, it's Texas on mine all day. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So, mm. um, in your era, how was it growing up in the funk? Um, well, uh, that's the, let me put it to you, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a stats kind of guy. 90, 91, <clears throat> we were the murder capital of the U.S., so it was tough, you know what I mean, as far as, you know, the, the streets, you know, because banging, they just hit hard and all of that, so, you know, it was, it was, it was popping, you know, uh, but we were able to do, you know, we still had a good time, you know, we kicked it, and I was a part of the problem, you know, I was, you know, I was very active, mm-hmm. you know, yes, very active. So, so. What, what, what part of Fort Worth were you from? Southside, so Fort Worth, Hattie, and Tucker. Oh, you were from Hattie? Hattie and Tucker, yeah. Them my stumping grounds. Well, so that's a Crip neighborhood, correct? It is. It wasn't then, but you know it is now, yeah. Okay, so I guess kind of can you kind of run me to play? Cause now we know Fort Worth, the South Side for for just Cripping. You know what I'm saying? Back then, what was it like? It was hustling. Everybody was trying to get some money. You know, crack it just here, so. You know, uh, hey, listen. Do I have to? Uh, do I have to watch my language, or can I no, no, no? You can you can speak freely and openly. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, you know, niggas was trying to get money. Crack it, oh, you know, crack it just hit the scene. So everybody was just trying to, you know, get some paper. And it was it wasn't. You know, we didn't have the colors for real. And my, and my partner, which is you know, one of my plugs back then, he brought the clipper from California. You see what I'm saying? Who? So, uh, you if know, you can say his name, no, I won't say his okay, name. Okay, okay, okay. A lot of people, you know, he, he was from LA, and that, you know, that, that you know, he, he brought it down. Right, right. So that, uh, you know, that kind of, you know, and not, not, not only just that, entertainment brought brought Crippin and, and Bloods to town. Not, but it was already there because you had guys like Booz and all of them guys that was from out in Como. They was doing their thing, but I'm just talking about far as the South Side. Though. We wasn't, we wasn't really so. We wasn't cover struck. And then it, it slid on up in there, you feel me? Okay. Um, if if I can, so so let me again run you play. So I've been doing a documentary in Fort Worth, and um, some of, we got to uncover a lot of untold knowledge. Like, for instance, like I was told that um, Triple OG Lorank brought the Hoovers here from Streetport, and... Um, you say the Cali connection actually comes from, like, the drug trade, kind of. So, um, bef- before crack had really hit the scenes of Fort Worth, like, how was the city and how did the city change once crack hit? Um, well, put it like this, from what I can remember is everything just seemed like, you know, we dancing, fighting, uh, you going out, you, you, you know, you, you're doing your thing, you're having a good time at house parties and shit. Like you might get a shooting or two here and there. Then when crack hit, it was just, you know, it seemed like it was, the, you know, like the game kind of changed to where it was always somebody dying. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, but, you know, I don't know, I guess it's, it was... Sometimes you can be so close to the fight that you don't even see a chance. You know, you just in it. Right. So that's, that, that, I don't want to give you a wrong answer. I can only give you your experience. My, uh, yeah, you know, and um, it just it just got real as you could, you know, it started to be about your life. You know what I mean? It wasn't just about who was going to go home lumped up this weekend. It was about who was going to make it home. And now listen, the rank. 
to to uh, speak on what you said. Look, man, yeah, look, man, little Wayne been crippled way back in the day. That is very true. But at the same time, uh, uh, let's just say around the same time, you had guys coming in from California. Now I can't say who was first or whatever. Which some came from Shreveport or that, but you know. You, my recollection was you had guys like Emac, LA Ryan, and all of them coming down, and that's when I remember Clifford being on what it did. Because, you know, the right from that hood, you, 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 I used to see him all the time. Right. So, you know, you know but I don't want to discredit who, who told you whatever they told you because they would know more about gang banging than me because I was still getting money. Right. So, let's talk about that. So, Fort Worth, uh, Fort Worth was about getting money at a period, and then the colors hit. So, mm -hmm, go ahead. no, no, go ahead. You go ahead. No, no, no. I don't want to cut you off because you, 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 you was wrong. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I just, you know, I, I like, and I'm gonna throw this in there because I like for people to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you an expert on your city. You from your city. You really are a documentarian on your city because if you just listen to some songs of yours, like, you can really almost get the experience of being in there. But what I was going to say was how did the city change once the colors hit? Okay. Hey, that's a good question. Now, in my experience, what happened is you still had hustlers that's getting money. You know what I mean? And then the, the banging came in, and this is not a slight to, to guys that was banging, but they wasn't focused on getting money, they was focused on banging. Right. So it intensified the neighborhoods where we had the hustle match. You see what I'm saying? Because niggas was making a block hot with the banging, with the shootings and all of that, the drive-bys and all, you know, which I would call senseless killings, you know? And again, not to slight nobody, but so you got the dudes that's getting money and, and every day, you know, the shit that comes with that every day because you hustling and, you you know, things could pop off. But then you had these dudes over here that probably, could, you know, that was just focused on banging, you know. So, you know, it just, it just like I said, again, it just, it just turned up the heat a little bit, you know, a lot of it. Right, right, right. So when, when you see a Bill Clinton come out with the crime bill and you see a Hillary Clinton come out, and call us super predators. Mm. Knowing the climate in Fort Worth, even though Fort Worth doesn't represent all the cities because, you know, y'all was banging pretty hard. Um, do you think it was somewhat justified? Oh, I, listen, let me tell you something. I mean, that is a good question. Boy, you are, you are, um, you on it because this is the type of stuff that people need to know and they just don't, homie. Listen, a lot of people put put it on Bill Clinton because he wrote the crime bill. They put it on Joe Biden because he supported it. He, they he put it on. The, well, right? Bill Bill Clinton signed it. Joe Biden wrote it. Okay, that's it. That's what they say. Joe Biden authored it, but they, they say that Joe Biden authored the bill in '86, but supported the bill in '94. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of us is right. So, but but you find out and you let me know, you know, so that I'm on point next time I speak about it, okay? But here's the deal. Mm -hmm. Joe, I'm, let's just say, let's take do a hypothetical and say that, say that Joe Biden authored the 1994 crime bill, right? Right. Like you said, he did it because this is what our aunties, our mothers, our grandmothers, our big sisters, and uncles and granddad, they wanted it because crack had hit, right? right? And nobody knew what the fuck was going on. They just know that the, you know, the kids can't go to the park. These niggas is breaking in the house. Nigga done stole the battery out of the car two times. <laughs> so, you know, they, just, they just wanted to, you know, hey, what can we do to stop this shit? Right, that they, right. they smoke them right now. So every, uh, the black community was in support of the 1994 crime bill. You know why? Not because they wanted to lock blacks away. Because they just wanted to stop the crime and nobody nobody understood the magnitude of what the, nobody understood nothing about crack. You know, even us selling it, we was just like, oh, this this shit here is freaking motherfucker. They take a hit, take take off, running across the street, drop dead, get back up, and like you know. So our communities, you know, had a rallying cry to Congress, like, man, we need some help. 
And so that's what they, when they came with that. You see what I'm saying now? This this woman don't get no excuse to call us super predators or nothing like that. But I'm just talking about what I know about that particular time and era. It's you know we we wanted to play. I'm not gonna say we because I'm not that goddamn old. But our people wanted the playgrounds back. They wanted the kids to be able to walk to school again. You know because it was nothing like they'd ever seen before. So they voted it in, man. Black people voted it in. Right, right, right. So. <laughs> That's facts. That's that's facts. That's facts. Supported by the Congressional Black Caucus and all. Yeah, they brought it to them. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's wild, man. That's wild. So for you, I guess um, you you talked about you being involved in the gang banging era, like as a as a get money nigga. What influenced you to gang bang? Uh, see, screw it. Hit breaks. <laughs> I never gang bang. Absolutely not. Never, not one day in my life. But I'm just, I'm from a crib hood, so I show the crib love. You see what I'm saying? And uh, if you ever want, you know, a lot of people think I'm a crib because I'm from a crib hood. And I don't deny where I'm from. But I've got blood homies that I love, you know, to where, you know, I'm talking about been on the battlefield with, got money with, and all of that. No, I've never gang banged a day in my life, and I'm proud to say it. And my plug, is the one that, like I said, one of the ones that brought Quip into town. But I was never going to be one to say, man, I'm going to kill you over a color. You know, because like I said, I was a good money. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to scratch and, and get to a million dollars before I was 20 and all. You know, I had, you know, the, I, those were my aspirations. So, no, I, I, I've never been a gangbanger. 